Hello, Aquarius. Mm, new moon in Leo. So if you're an Aquarius rising, or you're looking at this from your sun, then Leo is your seventh house. It is the house of <clears throat> partnerships. Both uh, marriage and business partnerships. Really, it's the house of contracts. It's also the house of open enemies. So hopefully you're not making any new enemies during this time. Um, but really, this is, this is about partnerships. The seventh house is... <clears throat> It's not the first social house. Um, that would actually be Leo, the fifth house. But it is <clears throat> one of, well, it's the first house where you are um, constructively interacting with other people in your environment. I mean, third house is like siblings. Uh, and your your neighborhood, your your like immediate surroundings. Um, <clears throat> fourth house is your deepest emotions, ancestry, your roots, mother, stuff like that. Uh, it's a it's a secretive house, secret desires. Fifth house is one of the it's the first social house. Really, it is about uh, romance, not serious committed romance but romance it is creativity um relationships with children um but artistry and the heart really creativity is the big one and then the sixth house sixth house is all about your daily habits and routines um it is about your colleagues uh, and your interactions with colleagues and then seventh house is directly across from your first house first house seventh house on the wheel right seventh house is where you're signing contracts with other people and creating bonds legally binding bonds so marriage leases business deals any contract right well, that's the seventh house. <clears throat> Eighth house is merging with another person. It's also your spouse. So your first house, seventh house. Your spouse, seventh house is assets and their wealth. Your first house, your second house is your wealth. So your spouse is wealth, right? <clears throat> uh, it's also unexpected events, things like that. Um, yeah, it goes from there. Uh, I won't go through the rest of the wheel, but <laughs> I almost went through the, all 12 houses for you, but I don't think you need that. So anyway, this new moon is dealing with partnerships of all kinds. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and since it's Leo, since it is Leo, it has that theme of creativity, creative partnerships. Partnerships that help you or uh, come from a heart-centered place. King of Wands, that's Leo. Love it. <clears throat> so that's interesting. Aquarius is rebellion and freedom and going against the grain and being a little different and a little bit out there potentially you know feeling quite othered or isolated or outcast um could definitely have that feeling of being from another place and time there's definitely uh kind of a oh, it's a little bit of a joke really but especially in the new age community to call aquarius aliens because often you feel very alienated as a child, as Aquarius, uh, especially with Aquarius Sun. But this allows you to be innovative, highly creative, think outside the box. Anyway, <clears throat> it's 
Leo being your seventh house. I don't know. I think that's interesting. Because Aquarius has this reputation for going off on their own and being alone for a while. And it's not even anything that the other person did. It's just that they need their freedom and they're ooh, maybe sorting something out in their mind or whatever. It's just, it's just, that's just what Aquarius does. Uh, they're aloof. Um, especially in unhealed Aquarius. Especially in unhealed Aquarius. So, with Leo being your seventh house, that to me says that your partnerships, when you do actually sign contracts with people, um, can be very fiery, passionate, and loving, and creative, and playful, um, and it's almost like you really need that play, and a little less uh, seriousness in order for it to really thrive, um, <clears throat> but I don't know, that's just kind of my, my sense from looking at the zodiac wheel, <clears throat> excuse me, so anyway, this is the uh, uh, <laughs> secret of the high priestess, so the first card came out, the Nine of Pentacles. Interesting. Reversed. So this is like independent wealth uh, and coming into wealth, but it's reversed. So you've either experienced a loss in in like monetary, physical matters um or it's to do with your health since it's it's virgo so it could potentially be a loss of physical health um you or somebody you know uh or you feel like there's money owed to you hmm yeah and on the bottom of the deck <clears throat> before we move forward is the eight of wands so this is really swift, swift, um, lofty, pointed energy. Could be uh, passionate communications. It could be communications from a foreigner. It could be <clears throat> um, you just switching directions and moving in, in, a, in a different direction or where you want to go. Um, one of the above. Anyway, so, second card out, crossing you right now in the universe, Saturn. Hello, Saturn. There's your traditional ruler. Uh, don't forget. <laughs> so, <laughs> major endings. It was a completion occurring. Uh, There's a, a subtle message here of knowing that what does happen is ultimately maybe not meant to happen maybe you weren't meant to lose this but there's uh, a, a bigger plan there's something that this weaves into that has an element of fate attached to it main influence <clears throat> the knight of pentacles interesting so you are influenced right now by uh, planning um, and securing a bountiful harvest, <laughs> whether that's uh, by creating bonds with people that will help you to rise or to build your own wealth, um, or whether it's just making meticulous, detailed plans um, and executing them in order to amass wealth, right? But uh, Saturn here says that there's some delay, okay? So what's strengthening the Knight of Pentacles is the Two of Swords reversed. Hmm, interesting. What's strengthening him is a lack of peace. Hmm, his mind is not at ease. And what's weakening him is the Queen of Swords. Okay. Interesting. Queen of Swords, Knight of Pentacles, strengthened by 
no peace. Weakened by the Queen of Swords, which you would think would be the maker of peace. <laughs> yeah, this is a Libra card. It's Moon and Libra. It's the first Deacon of Libra. And the Queen of Swords is Libra. Where is it? Right there. Right there. Anyway. <clears throat> What's also interesting. Yeah, that's mutable energy. Uh, okay. So you're looking to make changes in your wealth, in your status, uh, your pocketbook, in your material realm. And uh, it's like you've already made the decision you've already chosen the path and that's helping you feel more sure-footed in your direction in your plan right um but it's like this is an unexpected element you weren't anticipating this queen of swords um, interesting also that, uh, Libra's reading had Queen of Swords in the exact same position. Um, maybe Libra has a message for you. Um, I'm not sure. But anyway, and Libra, Libra, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's like this was unexpected. And she is asking you to change direction. Um, or like guarding the way. Yeah, interesting. Like, so uh, it, it might not be a person. It could be uh, an aspect of justice. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. So, all right. <clears throat> the next two cards is the pillars beside the high priestess. The white and the black. What's conscious? What's unconscious? What's conscious to you? Princess of Swords reversed. What's conscious to you is... I'm going to run through all the things that this could be. <clears throat> somebody lying, somebody that's indecisive, you being indecisive, um, a lack of truth, lack of justice, uh, revenge, deceit, spies, mm. and you're aware of it. You already know about it. What's unconscious to you is that it will not be your downfall. <clears throat> uh, this would be a very painful ending. Reversed. Unconscious. You might be um, afraid of it being a highly painful ending, but it's not. Like, it's like you won't be ruined by it. You actually will be victorious. And there's no need to fear um, a potential uh, highly negative ending. <clears throat> Second last card. And then the last card. Oh, I only tell you if it's a major arcana. And it is, so I'll flip it. But um, potential future outcome. Ace of Swords reversed. So, ouch, there's a lot of swords here. A lot of swords here, Aquarius. <sighs> uh, I feel like you need to be cautious of uh, somebody around you um, attacking you mentally. Like, maybe psychically or just mentally. Okay, just my camera. Anyway, um, but I also feel like you already know. <laughs> Aquarius's tagline is, I know. <laughs> that's why that's funny. Anyway, I feel like four before. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I feel like you already know. You're already aware of this. You already know it's coming. Um, like, you see it coming. Maybe it was unexpected, but 
it's like you know that as soon as you chose this path and that helped you feel more secure or more sure of which way you're going um you know that this is something you're going to have to face and you already know how immature they actually are they may be presenting on the outside that they are uh regal <clears throat> fair honest and just but it's like you can sense that underneath there's actually this conniving manipulative uh immature thievery yeah and like i was saying you may be uh, afraid of this ending really badly for you but you don't need to be afraid of it ending badly for you it will end but not badly um yeah like saturn's got your back here <laughs> there's definitely endings it's the universe but saturn's got your back and <clears throat> it's like this material loss that you have already experienced um because you've chosen which path to go down you're not waffling on the fence anymore and you're already making plans for how to move forward after that you will be supported that's what i'm feeling there and yeah you already know that this is coming you're already aware of it and that's fine and then the secret of the high priestess this is the only the second reading where i've gotten to flip it over so that's exciting to me anyway secret of the high priestess is the hermit virgo energy this is actually great um this is actually great especially since it's upright so you will be able to a gain a lot of wisdom from this b feel renewed afterwards c um excuse me uh within this destruction and ending there's seeds for the new right you may need to take some time to yourself. You may need to um, access your body's wisdom. Actually, there's three Virgo cards here, here, and here. So you may actually definitely need to pay attention to your physical health, to the world around you, to the physical realm in general. Try to stay out of your mind. Um, yeah, try to stay out of your head. And in the physical reality, Saturn, Saturn's asking you to be here um, because it feels like maybe you can't trust your mind completely right now, which is that might be really hard for you to hear Aquarius or comprehend. Um, but the cards right now are, are telling you that you need to tap into your body's wisdom because there is a lot of wisdom there and there's something that needs to come up, come out, be processed. And you can only do, you cannot do that intellectually. You have to do it through the body's wisdom, through the soma. So there's messages that you've been receiving or are going to re receive, basically, and they're fucking lies, uh, they're manipulation, deceit, etc. cetera. Um, and or you're getting these messages from your body. Uh, in fact, in fact, if when you're talking to this individual, uh, if you tap into your body, uh, in, into how you feel, right? What sensations are coming up? What's their vibe? What's their vibe? You'll be able to tell. And yeah, pay attention to that wisdom. It will guide you well. And yeah, wow, that was a really quick and easy reading, Aquarius. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Anyway, <laughs> oh yeah, Saturn's in your sign right now, right? Oh yeah, retrograde. Oh yeah, uh, okay. Um, you have to pay attention to your body right now. Saturn is transiting your first house, Aquarius. So, uh, and if you're not Aquarius rising, find out what house Aquarius rules because Saturn retrograde right now, Saturn will be moving from our vantage point backwards um, to about six degrees Aquarius. So see what planets um, and points you have in your natal birth chart. You can also check progressions if 
you know a little bit more about astrology but if you're a beginner just look at your natal chart see where aquarius is see where saturn will be transiting and make sure that you're paying attention to that if aquarius is your first house or you have an aquarius sun or aquarius moon and it's in any of those degrees that saturn is transiting definitely pay attention there's a lesson there that you need to work through and the uh you'll probably need to do or maybe even access some alternative healing actually virgo hell yeah you may need to access some alternative healing and actually like i was saying with the nine of pentacles you probably it's probably more to do with health but i mean your health is your wealth right <laughs> your health really is your wealth if you don't have your health uh you're fucked so anyway <laughs> aquarius that's your reading <laughs> have a good new moon and Peace out. <laughs>